I'm at one of my friends' home. Um, he, I, for for the Memorial Day weekend, um, he has he needed a vacation with his family, and and since he's given me a few actually a few weeks off so that I could go down and help with the flood victims down in Memphis. Um, I said that I would work uh, Memorial Day weekend for him and I get to stay at his farm while he uh, he and his family go up north. We're in further in southern Wisconsin and I'm going to be, I'm not going to be, I am manning a weather station here. Um, anyway, he lives in southern Wisconsin at the edge of a tall grass prairie. You can see the hills here. This is kind of more of an oak savanna uh, tall grass per area and I thought I'd do a couple wild medicinals while I was here and we're going to start with uh, this one right here and this is probably fever wise this is probably one of your more useful um, wild medicinals and this is yarrow and you can tell here's the yarrow leaf um, very feathery and uh, it, it's very unique on itself that you're not probably going to some people worry that they'll confuse confuse yarrow with poison hemlock. Well, if you do, then you're not looking at the leaf at all, because um, that leaf there is just isn't anything like it in the world. And it has this white uh, umbrella of flowers there. And uh, anyway, what this is for is medicinally is a fever reducer. And the best way you can make a tincture out of it. Oops. The best way to do it though is to um, dry it. This Once it flowers like this, in fact I'm going to trim these up and harvest these ones, but once it flowers like this, you just cut it off down close to the base, tie a few of them together and hang them in a dark place, and when they're dry, kind of crumbly dry, you don't want to crumble them, but just to test it and see if it's crumbly dry, then um, you put it in a doubled up brown paper bag, date it, and label it, and you just use it for tea. You, you know, take a good handful of it and put it into tea um, for, uh, again, fevers. And the, the legend behind this plant here is that um, here in Wisconsin we started off as a mining state. We mined for lead for uh, musket balls and such um, up to and a little bit past the Civil War. We were mainly a mining state as opposed to now we're known as the dairy state. And um, the miners would go to work on late Sunday night and get home late Friday night. And uh, they worked all week long and slept right there at the mines and then, like I said, came home on the weekends and the wives and the children were left at home. And one time one of the miners left and his young daughter got sick and the doctors were called and they came to you know, they did everything they could and finally one of the doctors said to um, the wife to go get her husband because her, the, the child was not going to survive anyway. And so the wife called the neighbor lady over to watch the uh, child and she ran to get her husband in the, mine, and by the t in the mine and by the time they got back the child was sitting up in bed and the neighbor lady had given the child yarrow tea and that had broken the fever. And it is a very good fever breaker, especially those hot, dry fevers. But between yarrow and uh, elderberry flowers, you, you can't get a much better fever breaker than this in your medicinals, wild, uh, in your herbal medicinals, wild or domestic. Um, the other thing yarrow is used for is your bitters for beer. And the reason for that is is because hops has a lot of estrogen in it. And some people, especially men, don't want to use hops in... Um, in their beer, it was it has been used over the centuries by governments to keep the people calm because estrogen is a calming, relaxing um, thing, you know, chemical whatever. And uh, some governments ordered beer to be made with hops just to keep the people calm uh, and not want so that they didn't uprise or anything. And uh, to rebel, people made their beer with the bitters of, of uh, yarrow instead of hops. And they both have a preserving quality. They both have an antibiotic quality or an anti, yeah, antibiotic quality. And so they both help preserve both hops and yarrow. Yarrow just tends to not, um, it hasn't the estrogen. So it doesn't 
it doesn't kind of lower your your uh, manliness for you men anyway. So some people will make their beer out of yarrow instead of hops. Anyway, for um, wild medicinals for fever breaking between this and yarrow f or, and uh, elderberry flower, you're just not going to find two better ones. And they're so easy to use. You can make a tincture, but it it's really not necessary. Just uh, trim it up, like I said, tie it up in and hang it somewhere until it dries in a dark place and then put it in into a brown paper bag double bit double it so that you don't get any light in it and there you go you've got uh, and date, date it label it and uh, you've got yourself a great fever medicine for in the winter time you know or any time actually when you get those fevers that just don't want to let go this is yarrow is known for it you can also use it if you get a cut you can take the leaves, kind of chew it up, stick it up against the cut, and it will immediately uh, stop the bleeding. I've seen it happen, I've, you know, many times. In fact, uh, just had a kid cut himself, and he was just amazed. He's like, wow, it just stopped bleeding. It actually literally kind of starts knitting together the sides. So for between wounds, um, for common plants, it's plantain and, and yarrow for, your, to, for healing. But anyway, that's yarrow.